All right, guys, welcome to Ictus Aquaponics. My name is Justin, and today we're going to start our aquaponics versus hydroponics trial. It's something that a lot of you guys have been asking us to do, and it's a question that we'd like to answer by running a parallel trial. So what is hydroponics? Come this way and I'm going to show you. So over here, we've got a standard NFT hydroponic system. This is the most common method used in hydroponic farming. What happens is we've got a nutrient tank down here at the bottom. Inside that nutrient tank, we mix all of the uh, chemicals and nutrients in order to feed the plants that are growing here. So <clears throat> we've been running this system again to make sure that everything's fine. We've been running this system now for about a month. We've got a few crops out of it. And so you can see here the crops are growing um, and it is working. You can see we've got nice lettuce coming on and baby gems. Uh, we've got some icebergs, some butter. So we are now ready to start the trial. What we're going to be doing is removing all of these plants and starting with seedlings at the same time as aquaponics. So what is aquaponics and what is the difference between hydroponics and aquaponics? Well, if you turn around, this here is our training and development center. This is where we are doing research into new crops, different varieties, methods and growing. So here we've got more methods. So in aquaponics, typically we are incorporating a number of different grow methods into the mix. In addition to the deep water culture system, we've got what we call the media bed, flood and drain. In this system, we have stones. It's 19 millimeter gravel. And the purpose of this gravel is twofold. One, as you can see, here's my cucumber plants. They are nicely established in that stone there. So it provides absolutely amazing anchorage for that plant. But what you don't see beyond the eye is this stone is actually providing an essential core part of aquaponics called biological filtration. If it weren't for the stone, we wouldn't be able to convert the ammonia from my fish into high quality organic nitrates that my plants love and need. So these stone, these media beds are going to flood and drain using a bell siphon over here. This bell siphon is helping to regulate a constant up and down flow of water in the system providing air as well as nutrients. So we've covered three different methods of growing. The fourth one, probably my favorite. It might look like normal growing to you, but in fact, it's what we call a wicking bed. So this wicking bed, it's dry on top. But as I dig down, as I go down deeper through this vermiculite peat and compost, you see it getting more and more moist. Now that is how my plants are getting the nutrients from below. Underneath the soil is a water reservoir that is providing that water and I top that reservoir up about once a week from the aquaponic system. The beauty of this method, well look at the variety we are growing here. We've just harvested our first potatoes. We've now replaced it with some coriander, parsley. We've got chilies, tomatoes, and one of my favorite, a tomato tree. Can you believe that this tree is only a few months old? This tomato tree is already starting to bear fruit, and I'm so excited to taste those. We've got granadilla plants. The fruits are also on their way there. So this is a great method for growing your fruits, your trees, uh, your potatoes, carrots, and all the rest. Now, over here we have set up a replica NFT system. This NFT system, you'll notice a key difference. We don't have the water reservoir for my nutrient mixing. Why? Well, simply it's getting it from the fish. So we've plumbed this in to the fish system and that is the only thing we're going to be providing these plants as a nutrient source. These plants are going to come out, we're going to put in new plants, same as the decoupled pure hydroponic system. Now a couple other methods we've got going on in this development tunnel. 
Verticals. This is becoming incredibly popular in spaces that are short on space. And here we are growing upwards. The beauty here, we've got spinach, we've got strawberries, one of my favorite. We've got mint, we've got celery, uh, we've got spring onions. Again, it's a nice variety of produce that you can grow in a very, very small space. So where is my nutrients coming from? That is the beauty of aquaponics. If you follow me over here, I've got three fish tanks set up. The purpose of these fish tanks, obviously, is for my tilapia to, to eat, to swim, to grow. Now, as they eat, they excrete, and that's where my nutrient source starts. So simply, all I'm gonna be doing on this system is feeding these fish a nice, quality, high protein fish food. And as I feed my fish, as they eat it, they're going to provide that organic nutrient for me. All right. So, here we are. Aquaponics versus hydroponics. Same environment, same tunnel. The only difference is we're going to be running a pure hydro versus a pure aqua. Which will be better? I can't wait, so we're going to get started, we're going to put those plants in now, and we're going to keep you guys updated through this really exciting journey that we're embarking on.